Hey guys, what is going on? This is Hunter Bick with DragTheBar.com, and welcome to part two of my series, Emptying the Clip, Big Bluffs and No Limit Hold'em. And this part is about check raise bluffs. So to get started, we are going to look at a little guide for check raise bluffs, and then we will look at some hands. Okay, so just a, kind of a little overview of check raise bluffing. There are basically three types the flop, turn, and river. And we're going to focus on the river. But just to, for the sake of completeness, to talk about the first two. The flop, I think everyone's pretty familiar with. It's not uncommon at all in No Limit Hold'em. And I think people do it pretty well generally with a pretty good frequency. The whole goal, of course, is to attack a continuation bet when you feel that the board texture does not hit your opponent's range very hard at all, and you expect to get some folds. The other reason would be to semi-bluff a nice draw, and oftentimes, you know, get it in pre-flop, which is perfect, or get it in on the flop, or hit your draw on the turn where you can, you know, start shoving or whatever. So, that's kind of the flop. The turn you see a little less often. Usually, usually when you see it as a bluff, it's a big semi-bluff. Maybe someone will check call with a straight draw and then turn a, a flush draw to go with it. So they'll they'll check shove the turn. That can be a great play. Another thing you can use it on, you can use it on real dry boards against people who frequently two barrel you. And, and you can just do it with air in, in that case and that can work pretty well. And the, the nice thing about what the turn has over the flop is you generally have more fold equity because you're representing a, a stronger range with your not only is it a late street check raise, but because of the pot being built, it is going to be a much bigger bet. And you can basically represent a, a wider range of hands. And, you know, people are often, you know, from the early days of No Limit, people often will check call like a set on the flop and then check raise the turn. So check raising the turn light can definitely uh, have some advantages. So, and, and then on the river, which I feel is the least common type of check raise bluff, and it usually has the most fold equity. Generally, the flop will have the least fold equity, followed by the turn, and then finally the river. And I think it's fairly uncommon, and I don't think people do it enough. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. And against the right people, it can have some very, very good fold equity. And the whole goal is to attack somebody who is betting thin for value, and they, they are able, it's with hands that they are able to lay down when they see a, a big check raise. Okay, so let's look at a couple of reasons on why we would want to check raise bluff. First off, it generally, in the right situation, it can create more fold equity than with a pot bet or an over bet. And I'm going to show you guys some, some spots for, uh, where that applies. You can also win more than you can with a pot bet because your opponent, of course, has to bet and that adds money to the pot and it inflates the amount that you can win with your bluff. It will help you balance your check raise value range, which is really, really important because being able to check raise the river for value is, or check raise any street for that matter, but in particular, in particular, it's it's important to check raise the be able to check raise the river for value because a lot of times it can be really hard to get a pot built out of position with with a huge hand, and when you can check check shove the river and expect to get paid a decent amount of the time. That just adds so much value to your uh, your big hands. It's 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 crazy. So, and, and then the last point is that if you check raise the river often enough, it will pe it will be in the back of your opponent's minds, and they are going to be more likely to just check down a a marginal hand instead of trying to get thin value. So you create an element of fear that will stop them from making real thin value bets against you, and that is. That does wonderful things for for your river for your river play, and it basically because it hurts theirs tremendously, and it'll help you get some cheap showdowns with with some hands that you know you might not have been able to show down before, and it, it basically just uh, really strengthens your game for, verse at, at the expense of theirs. So, okay, so who who do we want to, who do we want to use it against? Most of the same type of people that we want to overbet bluff, you know, regulars are playing a lot of tables and when they see a big check raise bluff they don't see it 
excuse me, when they see a big river check raise, they just don't see it all that often. So they generally tend to give it credit, and they're not going to stop playing their 10 other tables to really think through what you're doing and the likelihood of you bluffing in that spot. So th th they'll tend to give you credit. And then tags, of course, are able to make, you know, regulars and, and, and tags will all be able to make very thin river value bets. And those are exactly the kind of bets we're looking to attack. So, you know, that that is uh, definitely the type of person you, you want to be looking for. You know, th these people can also fold those very thin value bets. So these are people who can value bet like second pair, so or top pair no kicker, things like that, things that they can fold to a check raise. Nits, of course, will see a, a check raise and automatically assume it's a huge hand, and then they're capable of folding even even like big hands, like top pair top kicker type stuff. So th they're, those are excellent people to to, to check raise bluff, and then pretty much anyone else who doesn't fit into one of those two categories, pretty much anyone else who can fold like a top pair hand, or any other hand that they can bet for thin value. Uh, do not use it against weak players. Uh, I've made that mistake a, a few times, and you know, I've had really bad players look me up with like second pair versus like a check shove on the river because they just don't know how to fold, and it is just, just don't even try it. it it's just spewing money. So definitely stick to. Uh, thinking players who are, are able to fold and make thin value bets. Okay, so finally just a few things to look for when you're considering whether or not you're in a good spot to, to make a check raise bluff on the river. So, first couple of things, a flop or a turn check back will help you define the quantity of marginal hands in your opponent's range. Generally, a check back on one of those two streets is a very strong indicator. So that will certainly help you, uh, you know, realize when they're betting thinly on the river and make it a spot you can take take it away from them. Another point would be you want to think about your hand strength. Now, if you have like four high, for example, you might be better off just leading or over betting to try to take the pot down because if they check it back the times they check it back you will have zero, zero chance of winning the pot whereas if you decide to check raise bluff with king high for example you will win the pot on occasion when they decide not to bluff their missed straight draw or their missed you know queen high flush draw so the difference is pretty significant so you want to check raise bluff with the top of your bluffing range hands that will win at showdown value on occasion. So that's a really important point. Another spot is you want to look for spots where a pot bet or an over bet will work less often than a check raise bluff. One example is maybe on a four flush board where people love to make hero calls. Like let's say the river is a four flush and you overbet it. A lot of times people will call you with like the fourth nut flush there because they just think you're bluffing so often because it's a four flush board. But if you check it to them and you can get them to bet that, you know, fourth nut flush for a thin value, maybe they go for like a fourth, third pot. There's a hand like this coming up, but maybe they decide to bet 40% a pot with like their fourth nut flush draw on the, the four flush board. Excuse me, fourth nut flush they um, will then be put in a horrible spot when you check raise them and they're going to pitch it a lot of the time. So they're just not going to think that you are check raising them in that spot with air. So that would be another good spot uh, um, where a check raise bluff is, is going to work more often in my opinion than than a, uh, a pot bet or an over bet. So another thing to think about is board textures. Be, and the board texture matters because you need to be able to represent a, a, a lot of combinations of hands that beat one pair. So for example, if you think about a Jack-10-8-6-2 board versus a Ace-9-6-2-3 board, on the Ace-9-6-2-3 board, if you check raise bluff, there's really not much you can represent other than like a set. So, and there are so few combinations of sets and everybody know, and everybody knows that. So it's just you're never going to get an ace, uh, a pair of aces to fold, ever. But on a Jack-10-8-6-2 board, you check raise that river, 
and this guy, let's say, let's say somebody value bets Jack Nine or Queen Jack, and you check raise on that board. There are so many more combinations of monster hand of monster hands you can have there. You know, Queen Nine, Seven Nine, that right there is 32 combos of hands. Not, and that's before we start talking about sets and two pairs. So you can represent so many more combinations of huge hands on a board like that than on a really dry board. So that's another important uh, thing to think about. Okay, let's check out some hands. Okay, so to start us off, let's look at a hand I played, as you can see, at the end of June. This was a 5-10 game on full tilt, and I have deuces, so let's see what happens. I min-raise, yeah, I've been getting through about a couple times, and the min-raise can be a pretty effective way to deal with that. So, I just I just min-raise, and uh, only the button calls, and the flop comes down a 7-7, so obviously a pretty standard board to see bet, you know, very dry, if he doesn't have an ace, he's probably going to fold, so pretty straightforward. But he does call me. The turn's interesting. Um, the board starts to get dry with that, with the jack of hearts. Backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draws are out there. So I just check it. I'm planning on just giving up at this point. You know, if he's floating me, good for him. But he actually checks back. So that tells me right there that he's not floating me, that he actually has a hand, because you don't float someone on the flop only to not bet on the turn. So he has a hand. He very very easily has like ace eight, ace nine. He could have, at this point he could have pocket tens. He could have pocket nines. He could maybe even have queens if he didn't decide to three three bet me. So a lot of stuff going on here. Most most likely he has some sort of ace. So he checks back and the turn is an eight. And I thought this was a really interesting card. And at this point I'm starting to think what I'm going to do if he does bet. First thing I thought about here is what happens if I if I lead out. And this is a a good example of a spot where I don't think overbetting is going to do a whole lot for me. I think on a board like this, I think I can rep a 7. But I if I pot it, I can it's guaranteed he's going to call me. I mean he's, you know, he has some sort of most likely a top pair hand and that's a huge part of his range and he's not folding it. So a pot bet's not going to get it done. I could overbet it. I don't know this guy real well, but people, you know, occasionally you will get the the folds from top pair with, with an overbet. However, I thought a check raise bluff would get me a lot more, a lot more folds. And considering I knew this guy had a hand, and you know he he was pretty decent, I definitely thought he could value bet once he sees me check twice. So I decided to check it to him. And I was I was planning on looking at his bet sizing and seeing how much you know strength he showed. If he like potted it right here, I'd probably just fold. But if he bets like half pot, then it's like really indicative of like ace, you know, five or ace nine or just something very marginal. So at this point, I'm just kind of open minded about, and, and I'm just kind of seeing what, what what develops. So I check it to him, and he bets fifty. So not exactly a strong bet. It looks like he has ace four and he's trying to get me to call with like king jack or queen jack or something like that. I think that's almost certainly what was going on here. So at this point I can represent a seven. Okay, excuse me. At this point if I check raise, I can represent a lot of hands. I can represent somehow backing into a flush, somehow backing into a straight. I can represent pocket eights, pocket jacks, any seven, and of course the flushes and straights. So there's a lot that I, I could have backed into or have that's going to beat his top pair. Uh, 